Hi everyone, I'm Paula Harvey from Tahoe Ranch Conservancy. Listen. Wow, there's a lot going on in the forest. Today, we're gonna to do a very special kind of observation. But today, we're gonna to use our ears rather than our eyes. Let's get started. Lesson 10. This one is called Forest Karaoke. In it, we're going to be transcribing a bird song. So in today's lesson, you're going to be describing a bird song in your journal using writing, drawing, diagramming, and numbers. The basic procedure will go like this. You're gonna draw the bird song on paper using longer lines to show longer notes and shorter lines to show shorter notes. You're gonna use rising and falling lines to show changes in pitch and heavier lines to show louder sounds. You're gonna describe your song using words like buzzy, harsh, bouncy, that kind of thing. And you're going to time how long the song is and how long the interval is between repeated songs. So as always, we're gonna start with the title and the metadata in your journal. You can go ahead and get started with that. The title today is called Forest Karaoke. And the metadata that you're gonna be using, like always, the date, the day, the time, the season, the location and habitat that you're in, the temperature, the wind speed, the cloud covering, the percentage. And then other pertinent information might be who you're with, or there may be something else that's very noteworthy about where you are and what's happening. So add that to your metadata. All those kinds of details helps you to remember that moment. The first step that you're going to do is you're gonna listen very carefully and you'll notice that there's a lot going on in terms of sound. So when you listen to what we're listening to right now, all these birds, my goodness, we're listening to half a dozen, at least maybe more different kinds of birds in the background. So you're gonna choose one of those bird songs that's repeating itself. You don't want it to be hugely long, but you do want it to have some kind of song to it and it repeats. Very important it repeats because you are gonna be studying this. And so if it only does it one time, it's, it comes and goes very quickly has to be something that repeats itself. Now, to help you listen, I want you to close your eyes and just focus on the sound of that bird. While you're listening, gently lift your hand in front of you and move your arm up and down. Move your fingers as if you're controlling the bird's voice. You're really learning that song by doing that. Going up, now it's going down. It stops. Just use your hand for that. Raise your hand higher when the bird sings high notes for pitch and lower when the bird sings lower pitches. Wiggle your fingers if you're hearing a, a buzz or a warble like that. All right. Then after a minute of doing that, I want you to try imitating the song out loud using words and nonsense babble. Now, it can be that you're using words, but it can be that you're just making these sounds up. Both work. Then make a set of noises that as accurately as possible mimics that bird's song. Compare your imitation to their song and then modify the words that you've used if you need to, to make it sound more accurate to yourself. Do that several times before you even start writing. The next step will in fact be that writing part. You're going to transcribe that bird song in your journal. You're going to actually draw the song in your journal, sort of your own version of writing music. You're going to use rising and falling lines on the paper, longer lines for long notes, rising and falling lines to show changes in pitch, scribbles, 
to show buzzes, thick marks to show louder sounds. And then you're gonna add those inventive words to describe the sound. Now, you're also gonna be describing that sound. And here are some words that we use to describe it. There's just, these are samples. There's a lot of them here, but there's a lot more you could say. So it could be quiet or musical, buzzy, noisy, metallic, whistle, clicking, cooing, shriek, melodic, loud, mechanical, nasal, whiny, polyphonic, meaning many sounds, hooting, furry, ticking, tapping, clear, harsh, sweet, slow and relaxed, energetic, piercing, calm, peaceful, light, drum-like, complex. The next step is to describe the speed of that song. How, um, is it a slow series or is it a fast trill? And now you're going to use that, that one, two, three part of your journaling. You're going to start timing the song and recording the length of that song. Now you're estimating, you don't have to have a stopwatch. You can estimate it. You could say one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. That would give you an idea of how many seconds. And then you're going to time the length of the song and also the interval between the songs. So the bird is say, singing a song, then it takes a break, and then it repeats that same song. And that, so you're gonna time both the length of the song and the interval between them. Then I want you to describe your surroundings and the scene. Where is the bird singing? Is it at the top of a tree or in an open field, in the middle of a bush? Birds sing for many different reasons. Some sing for territory. So is it standing in, a, in the highest spot where it can defend its area? Or is it in a hidden place where it feels safe? You want to describe where that bird is as it's singing. Birds will move around and be quiet in some spots and then sing in others. And then if you were able to see that bird whose song that you studied, go ahead and try sketching the bird. We've already practiced doing that fast sketching, so go ahead and do that. And then if you can, later on, you can try and identify the bird. But today, we're not so worried about the identification of the bird as we are of learning how to listen and transcribe what we're hearing. So in this journal page that I've created for you, what I've actually done is just give you some examples of things that you could be putting into your journal. So notice these colored boxes here, see them? So we have several different things here. One of them showing the, qual the, the um, qualities of the song. So for example, if it's musical, maybe you're gonna draw a line that kind of goes like this because that's how the sound looks in terms of a line. It's loud, maybe it's gonna be thicker lines like this. If it's buzzy, maybe it's just this up and down little stuff here. Um, and then also when you're talking about pitch, it may look like this. So it might be, I'm just making this one up. It could be chip, 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 chip. That could be the song. Could be something simpler like this. And this has long and short, look. So it could be something like that as a bird song. The next thing that you're going to do is lots of different made up words that might sound like that animal. So for example, this one actually is from a previous journal entry I did on the American coot. And one of the descriptions is that's the sound that it makes in the, when it's um, moving around in the water. Here's another one. Could be something like this, babbly blabbly, or it could be chick chick chick, eo play, or wit wit, or cheer cheer cheer, birdie birdie birdie, cheer cheer cheer, birdie birdie birdie, cheer cheer cheer, birdie birdie birdie. Could be something just like this, scream, or kick 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 kick. So 
there's lots of different ways that you can create words, just made up sounds. Choo choo, choo choo, jug jug jug, choo choo, choo choo. And notice that I use things like veer, 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 veer. Or flip, 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 quick, quick, quick. Okay. So those are the kinds of things that you might want to write. And then the last one are the types of sounds. And we just went through a whole list of them. And so I've added that here again. Whistle, hooting, clicking, burry, buzzy, nasal. All of these descriptions, just trying to come up with letters and words that would make kind of make what the sound is like but also what does it look like Here's it starts low and long and then short and high low and long short and high and then also just using words that it makes these kinds of sounds and then also remember you're doing these measurements so it might be a two second song like right here or it might be that you're listening to those intervals, maybe the intervals 30 seconds, and the next time it's only 25 seconds, and the next time it was 35 seconds. So you're just going to keep writing and studying and listening. Take your time, just get into it and just relax and listen. Now, once you're done with your journal entry, again, you're going to do reflection questions. And again, here's the procedure for doing them. Answer all the questions. You don't get to pick and choose. They all are there for a reason. Answer them in question answer form, meaning you're, ans you're answering them using as many words from the question and putting them into your answer. Number the answers in the order that works best for making a good, cohesive, meaningful paragraph. Begin your paragraph with a topic sentence. For example, you could say, in this journal exercise, I studied the song of Anna's Hummingbird. And then you're going to write the answers to the questions in that selected order and finish that paragraph with a closing sentence. By analyzing the song, I learned a lot about Anna's Hummingbird. And that's it. Here are your questions. We used words, diagrams, and timing to describe the bird's song. What different kinds of information can be communicated in each of these three note-taking approaches? So what information did you learn by using words? What information did you learn by using diagrams? Very different information there. And then what did you learn about the timing of the song, especially those intervals? Then what patterns did you notice in the song that you learned today, such as the length of the notes or the presence of trills? Again, we're looking at patterns then cause and effect. What might be some reasons birds sing or call? Especially your bird, why might your bird be singing? And how might that help them to survive? And then again, the last question, are there any ways that singing might impact birds in a negative way? Explain that one as well. So there you have it. I hope you have fun doing journaling about sounds today. We're going to go into more sounds in our next lesson. But until then, bye for now, and thanks for joining me.